Hello my friends, and well today I have something unusual for you. Yes, a ball tank. But here, well, you can see that it's not only really good at spinning, but it's also has an ugly turret box shaped thing on top, which will inevitably be scrapped and will not be the final product for when it's done. But here you can see that I'm just showing you that it's actually a plastic ball that I super glued together. Well, actually at first I tried to glue it together, with only liquid cement, but found it wasn't a very good structure piece. So I really recommend uh, both super glue, and in this case, Gorilla Glue, or maybe some Loctite, very strong stuff, and combine it with the liquid cement to make sure it is fully cemented and held in place, nice and tight. And I'm just creating some nice texture slash primate at the same time with some Tamiya white putty. And considering it's my birthday today, I figured I'd give myself a nice little scratch-built ball tank. And if you're curious that uh, what the plastic comes from, I believe I dig digged around through some plastic box of Bionicles or maybe Legos, but probably more likely a Bionicles set. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it was perfect. I, I thought it was just the right size for a rough 172nd scale model, which is what I, I want this to be, even though it may not exactly be, be uh, 172nd, but I still think it works. Uh, anyways, I still have many inspirations that come for this model. Some of you may know that it may look like the one from World of Tanks. Uh, I can't exactly think of his name right now, but uh, I have the magazine as well that I used a lot to help inspire me and figure out how he built it but he also created his tank model ball tank from scratch out of a plastic lego planet that he stole from his son <laughs> so yeah it's it was a lot of fun and interesting experience uh you, you can obviously tell here i'm trying to make the spotlight but it was definitely tricky at times and i fit around with it a lot even trying to make my own gun barrels, which uh, if another question comes up, I will let you know that most of these parts just come from other random kits, of course. I guess you could also say it's more like kit bashing as well, considering that a lot of the pieces come from 172nd models that I've built before and ones that you've never seen that have been lying in the dust in their boxes within another moving box. Say like, a uh, World of Tanks themed Atalari Tiger and a monogram uh, Panzer IV in 132nd scale, which is uh, what these gun barrels are made out of and its little fixtures that they hold it in place. And that uh, headlight comes from the Tamiya T34 I have on Instagram. So, really, uh, no any of these parts became useless. You know, some people may think that they only become junk, but no, they end up helping you out in the end. Especially with these Panzer IV pieces that I never thought in a million years that would provide me a perfect size gun barrels, which you can clearly see here. They even have that nice little gun sleeve on that you would see on certain gun barrels, more particularly like the German uh, five centimeter, which actually I think I want these to be more like American 75 millimeter guns, which is what this tank is actually supposed to be a sort of post World War II tank design in joint with the Germans. As you can see later on, that it has certain German uh, attachments onto it, or at least details and writings that you would see on other train cars or vehicles. And what's funny is that I had actually no plan to build this model or had any idea that I was gonna have this built and ready for my birthday. Uh, it's just kind of strange that this, this just came out of nowhere, but seeing it from uh, Plasmo's model show that he went to in Mosin in Hungary, if you know what I'm talking about in that video, that's where I got that picture from of Christoph's uh, model from that model show. And really, it just struck me and I wanted to see if I could build my own ball tank. And now I can say I finally scratch built slash 
I guess kit bash my own ball tank and I didn't even have to go out and buy my own model and I think that goes to show that you can truly create your own model and customize it to any each of your desire and you can clearly see how much detail I've packed onto it other components that will try to make sense with wires and connecting cables that I at least try to make some kind of sense out of it you can even notice that I actually uh, removed the ugly box top to a more uh, soft plastic piece also used with some Verlinden uh, lead foil to give it that uh, sort of subtle texture and make it more smoothed out and I even put a little bit of rocks on the inside as a counterweight just for the bottom half not completely fill it up uh, inside the model especially since it's hollow but I recommend that you super glue it and make sure you just pack it down at the very bottom just so it sits nicely in balance and it won't roll away from you uh, as it has done to me uh, multiple times but at least luckily it won't happen too often oh and I almost forgot that the tracks come from a trumpeter 172nd easy 8 sherman which uh, again is on my instagram if you're curious the flatfoot loogie uh, you know what i mean when you see it uh, when it was uh, awfully painted for i guess sort of my first second or third models i've ever painted in my life but uh, either way the tracks you know the sherman just became a test bed model i would just apply anything onto it and i removed the tracks since then and they were just lying around in my model junk box and oh now they're proved as something useful uh, as i said before when you think anything is useful you pretty much become uh, a scavenger when your mind and ideas are exploding in your head and of what you want to do and add when you're creating your own ball tank especially just anything that comes to mind uh, when you're creating your own model and here you obviously saw me apply some rivets earlier and maybe some sanding just to make it more smooth but i ended up priming this model with some red oxide primer uh, maybe just for the help of uh, a nice deep shadow or a very nice dark color to act as a basis for us but i made sure to apply two uh, thin layers of this primer and we ended up using some uh, life color acrylics with some green brown and olive green but really does I was just experimenting with it. Uh, I would just take this as a grain of salt, especially when I'm trying to go for almost like a deep, rich uh, NATO green color, which you can see here I'm just using with these four colors. And really, it's just something randomly I applied. A very similar technique that I did with on the i7. Uh, you don't have to follow it, but it's not exactly going to be 100% the same towards the end. Because remember, we're going to be applying washes, weathering, and even some filters in the end. But I, again, it's something that I had to change up over time because I was undecisive and I wasn't sure that I wanted it to still be a deep green, have a tricolor camo, or if I even wanted it to be a Russian or German. But here it's just still American and you see later on with the decals as I'm just randomly applying the... Uh, I guess scattered texture highlights I believe is what I'm doing here uh, I know I'm not even sure of myself but again this is something that's completely uh, random there's no schedule for it there's no nothing is written I was just like once again as I said I'll come off as a broken record doing it randomly I pretty much had no idea what I was doing from here you even see that I rinse and repeat certain steps of uh, applying the washes and then applying the highlights and then applying another green uh, thin layer which again I'm just going backwards and forwards on applying this stuff trying to figure out how I can at least create some kind of pre-shading and some post-shading just with the brush and not having to worry about any little areas that I have to apply a wash into or uh, basically just it's going to be bare plastic or bare red, ox red oxide but uh, essentially it's just something that i wanted to experiment with and since i was on a time crunch you know to get this video out and for this model 
you know, time was catching up and I knew I had to pedal to the metal and really uh, focus on how I can build up this model to a, a good decent standard up to my liking and how I can also be more efficient, which I think is something that comes to mind to a lot of us that, you know, we don't want to spend a lot of time on these models because we always want to get to the next one and as quickly as possible, of course. But that's not always going to be the case whenever you want to, you know, depending on the size of the model, the amount of details you have on it, whatever the case may be, it's not always going to be the same for every single one that you do. I, even though I wish it was, you know, uh, like making this model in the time that it, it takes to make this video, or at least the overall time span of this video, just being uh, 20 minutes. But you can see that I'm just trying to apply on some decals and I already painted the tracks in a nice uh, dark gray color. You can just paint it in NATO black or or a black brown or even a rust color, really. It's entirely up to you on your preference choice because inevitably it's just going to be heavily weathered unless that's not what you like to do with the models. But uh, to cover up the many mistakes on this, I'm going to need weathering to save me, especially with a lot of mud texture. But here you can see I'm using super tiny details, uh, some of them that say lift here or some that come from uh, a German artillery set, like the Karl gun, or like that leopard, that two German leopard set, that those two duos that you may have or may not have seen me do in a video before. And those two came in 144 scale, which is extremely small, and was very nice actually for these printed out decals. For when you're trying to print those decals or uh, take them off that large piece of paper and you're concerned about losing some just only dampen uh, a little bit even if you get too much on that decal sheet of water uh, you want to at least tap off the excess onto a paper towel let it sit there and then you can use a toothpick to help you along with a brush to help lift it off the decal sheet and then place it onto the piece of paper and as I showed you earlier, uh, off screen or off camera, that I sprayed it with a flat clear and be sure it's actually a flat clear. Don't be a dummy like me as I made a mistake of at first I sprayed it in clear and I completely somehow didn't realize it at first. I have my mind just went blank and I completely thought I grabbed the flat clear one, but nope, uh, that's just what I get. But really actually ended up helping with the model you know it toned it down a little bit making it extra shiny uh, maybe almost satin when i then applied the matte varnish but uh, really it didn't end up mattering in the end because it's going to be weathered down chipped and have a lot of uh say washes and uh weathering washes applied it's uh, really toned down the overall look of the model and here you just see me painting on details like the wires and cables and even to the stage of finally weathering the tracks. Now this may look strange as yes it is. It's a very old, uh, I believe maybe from 2014 or 2015, dried up, gunked up paint from Humbrol, I believe. It came from their Battlefield uh, D-Day set, which is basically just a big giant diorama set, which... Uh, you're not going to believe this, but I once came into a Barnes & Noble once and came to a table where they had a clearance sale. And <laughs> funny enough, that uh, the, the whole entire set uh, just only came in for between 2 or $3. Yes, you heard me right, 2 or $3. I couldn't believe it myself. I had the option to get a second one, but for some reason I was dumb enough to not take the second one home because... For whatever reason i didn't think i needed it but yeah i i now regret that uh, back then as you know just one of my dumbest modeling uh decisions i've ever made you know why not get the other one I have more paints and more models i don't know what what was i thinking but uh besides from that uh getting a, a striking lucky gold and uh, getting a, a nice sweet deal on that set uh, I was still able to use these paints that 
uh, once again, uh, coming back for a circle, I never thought I was going to have to use them. Typically, you're probably more used to me using the Tamiya or Vallejo paints, but nope. Uh, and if you're curious, I revived them by using some X20A Tamiya acrylic thinner. I let them sit there in for a few hours, and as I mixed them together, I was able to uh, re revive it back, essentially. You can even use some water for when it's done. I, I don't think you can use water to revive it back because if it's really dry and has no moisture trapped inside of it, then it's long gone unless you apply some kind of thinner. And now you can even see me use some uh, earth textures like the AK Interactive Acrylic uh, Splash Mud uh, Earth Effects, which has that nice little grainy texture that I like so much. And I'm even using some steel. I, at first I was gonna I was using silver, but I then switched to steel as it's just a little bit darker. If you want to darken it up a little bit more, you can use some black or dark gray, which will do the same trick, but don't apply too much. Also, I just remembered the original price for that Airfix D-Day diorama set I managed to pick up from Bards and Noble for practically a steal. Its original price from what I saw compared to online and my local hobby shop was $50. Yes, that's 50 US dollars. I, I still can't believe it. As we're closing in to the final end stages of, of the model and towards the end of this video, uh, you see me apply wet effects and wet mud effects, uh, especially the wet effects on the centerpiece of the tracks which you'll see in real life reference photos and from that model of Christoph's uh, Polnix uh, which I believe it's how I pronounce his name but I, I apologize if I did but his model had that nice wet effects down the middle of his tracks which again is from real life photos if you look at tracks from tanks that have those wet mud effects you'll see exactly what I mean and really it's just applying a nice dark brown color and even apply some speckling or or maybe some splash mud up on the mud guard that you see there and on and around the back but really it's just something that is so simple and a nice little bit of detail you can even go back and correct your mistakes like i am doing here trying to blend it in as much as possible and even just for the future of chipping I'm using ivory and Iraqi sand to lighten the base color that I used and also using black brown as our deep scratch effect. Basically almost acting as like the primer or the metal oxidizing. But you can even also add a little bit of rust which I have added in some areas that you may notice. But here I'm just doing some random basic uh, sponge chipping and also a, sort of a cool uh, short trick technique that you can apply on the undersides of the body to make it look like it has seen a lot of wear and tear and use uh, especially when i have this one i uh, almost seeing combat uh, at least in my mind i truly do appreciate you all for uh taking your time to uh, make it to the end of this video and uh, hear me talk about my model and uh, again how much I appreciate you uh, supporting my work and to me continuing my love and passion for this hobby and for making videos for you all uh, especially since I really wanted to uh, get this video out there uh, on my birthday uh, just for you all and yes if you are curious uh, of uh, well I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much level 20 right now, so I, I, th I think you can guess what that means. But here, it, it's just something that I hope that you all enjoy uh, watching me put this model together and with it being completely scratch built and kit bashed from other uh, vehicles. Again, the, from, from 172nd to 148, photo etch and 135th to 32nd. Uh, it, again, it doesn't matter how many parts that you find or the what's lying around, you can easily do this yourself as well. Um, with this being my first very rough scratch built kit, 
I think many of you out there can do a better job or maybe have an even equal uh, model. Uh, and don't worry if you don't think that you're capable of doing something like this or if it's too much to think about uh, or if it seems too complicated, trust me, it isn't. I definitely had some troubles and issues, especially with that horrible box piece on top of it, but I was able to muscle my way through it, change it, and just put a lot of uh, time and tedious work into it. In the end, I think it came out looking pretty nice, and it looks pretty good in certain angles, and uh, some parts not so much. Uh, and I think you can tell which parts they are, but hey, you know, not all models in you are going to be perfect. And I wasn't striving for perfection here uh, as much as I w would want it to. I, di I just can't believe I was able to somehow pull this all together. And with my lack of experience and knowledge in this area, it's very, very rough and dim because I... I just had no plans or sketches or drawings for this. This was all come up in my uh, crazy mind and I just wanted to see what worked and what didn't. And it's actually quite simple when you break it down. So uh, again, thank you all. Much love and support and I'll see you all next time.